Hello and welcome to Tip of the Week from the BIMGuys.com and CADTech Seminars. In this video, we're going to talk about dealing with wall sweeps. We'll look at some different wall sweep options to make wrapping a building or adding banding to your walls a bit more efficient. So let's take a look at the first one. The first option here is if we go up to the architecture tab here and we hit the wall command and drop it down as a thing called a wall sweep. Now, these wall sweeps, in this instance, they stick to the face of the wall. Now, if I fire up the wall sweep, it's going to ask me for whatever type I want, and we can, in another video, show you how to build these. And then I'll come over here, and then I can place it on the wall. Now, if you watched the previous video, we talked about how to make these different pier types. And in this instance, you can see I've left three of the remaining uh, pier types in here, so we can see how Revit interacts with these wall sweeps now. So if I put the wall sweep in right here, you'll see it's it's going across that wall. So in this instance, I pick here, you'll see it goes up, and then you pick the next wall and the next wall and the next wall, and it continues on. Now there's a break between the two walls. That's why it shows that little nugget there, or that little break. I'm going to escape twice. And now you can see how that banding is done. Let's try that again. Uh, we'll go up top to again, wall, wall sweep, and I'm going to come down a little lower. I pick here, and then I pick here and here. Now, being that this wall is an actual wall, so this is two walls and they're just bound together, you can see how that information is brought around. So in this corner, it looks fine because they, the two walls butt. But what happens in this corner? Now, I'm going to grab this and spin it around. One A little trick in Revit is to select the object of interest and then shift middle mouse button. You can spin it around. So you'll notice that we're not getting a clean uh, cleanup right here. So how can we make that happen? Well, one of the nice things about sweeps is you can manipulate the end conditions. Now, when I pick this sweep, you'll notice that I have this little dot. Uh, these dots give me the ability to expand it further outward or further inward either way. I'm going to hit undo so it goes back to its original location. You also have the ability to fold or return it back on itself. Now, we do this in carpentry when you have, uh, let's say, a window and you're doing the trim under the window, under the stool and trim, you can roll it back. So let's see how we do it in Revit world. We hit modify return, and you can see here when, from the graphic, you choose the edge, like so, that you want to return, and you'll see how it rolls it back. Now it's hard to see with this element because it's a rectangle, so it rolls a rectangle. You don't see any variation in the change here. But once that's done, now you can pick it, and just like I drug the point left and right in this instance, I can now drag it back, okay? You'll notice that the elements go back now. So at this point, we've got those two elements. I'm going to go ahead and hit join. I'm going to say join them up. Let's see if that actually works. Doesn't seem to be. So you may want to bring if you want to bring it back a little bit. If you want to see that edge, now you can see the edge. So that is how we can adjust the wrap of a wall sweep, and that is one way to do it. Now, what happens is in the previous video we talked about different pier types, as you can see here. Now this pier here is not actually a wall. So the wall sweep is not going to stick to that. So how do we make this happen? Happen maybe happy, happen efficiently. So we could probably play some games and make this happen, but let's take a look at another tool we can use. We can use an in-place family. Now an in-place family is going to work very similar to what we did, but instead of us actually just picking the wall and then finessing the edges like we did here, we're actually going to draw a path and we're going to then create the shape or use a shape that's available. So let's take a look at this one here. So I'm going to go back to level one, and here we are. So if I zoom out, you can see there is the wall that we just put in, and you can see the sweep going around. That wall type and wall type, different wall types, and that seemed to work pretty well. Now over here, we again have two wall types. This is a wall and a wall. And then in this scenario, we have a wall and a column. So we have two different elements, so that wrap is not going to pick up around that column or pier. So let's go ahead and see, look at another way. Besides using the, the wall sweep, you can use a tool in Revit called an in-place sweep. These are model in place. It takes a few more clicks, but what it's going to do, it's going to give you a bit more uh, adjustability and custom as, well, you can customize it how you want it to be. I'm going to hit model in place. Now, I have to tell Revit what this thing is. I'm going to say, Revit, this is a what? This is part of the wall, so I'll hit OK on that. Then it's going to say, what is this thing? This is used in a database to quantify if you want it. I'm going to say wall sweep. 
and you could call them wall sweep one, wall sweep two, wall sweep three. Um, now I'm going to do it two ways. I'm going to do it the first way. I'm going to show you it's not going to be that friendly, and then the second way will be friendly. So let's take a look. I'm going to use a thing called sweep. When you fire up a sweep in Revit, it asks you to either sketch a path or pick a path. Once you pick the path, you can give it a shape, and it will take that shape and send it along that path or follow the path to create that shape, as you can see in the graphic here. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, I want to, let's say, uh, sketch a path. Now, you can use pick also, pick line, but you'll notice that on some of these it works great. There's a pick line, but notice this line draws back way over here, so I'm going to pull that to here. So you can use that, but let's talk a little bit about um, going ahead and drawing them in. So if I want to draw them in, I'm going to turn on chain for a moment. This is typically how your machine is when you're working with walls, etc. So I'm going to start the line here. I pick it from a point to a point. Now at this point it looks pretty good. You'll notice that it's not picking up on intersect on that intersection. We can force an intersection. If you're an AutoCAD person, right click, snap overrides. You can say snap to intersections and usually it'll pick up on that intersection. Okay. Uh, then you can come over here. Uh, and continue to walk your way around. Now you'll notice that it, a little lock is popping up every time I click, but to set right after, here's another point, I'm gonna right click and say, snap overrides, snap intersection, and we snap the intersection, okay? If we can get that intersection, okay. Now, looks like I didn't nail it, but that's fine. But each time I put it up, you'll see that little arrow, or that little lock shows up, right? Now. I just blew it off. I didn't care about it. And here's why you don't want to do that. I'm going to hit finish the line path. So I put the path in place. I'm going to go back to 3D and you can see the line is based here. Now I'll go ahead and select my profile. We can drop this down and choose from any of the profiles like we did earlier. You can see there's a lot of different ones in here, including some crazy variations. Let's just use maybe a, a one by eight. So I'll put that in there. Now you'll notice it is facing downward uh, and also inward into the building. So we're going to do a little bit of finessing of it. I'll say, okay, let's rotate that thing 180. So what that's going to do is roll it up. You can see where it's sitting. And I'm going to say set it three feet above the ground here. Now, what it's done is it's using that as a baseline, but it's going to draw it here. I go ahead and hit finish. And you see I put the banding in there and actually went behind that. And it's a beautiful thing. I'm going to hit finish. The downside is, since we didn't lock the relationships, if I was to grab this wall and move it backwards, notice how that banding did not update. So what we're starting to run, it, run into is now great. We've made some edits to the building and now our banding is all screwed up. We can alleviate this by taking a moment when we're putting in this banding and lock the relationship. So how would we do that? I'm gonna go ahead and delete the banding right here and I'm gonna go back to my plan view. You don't have to use the plan view. You can actually use other views if you wanna draw in other views. Uh, I just find this works well. I'm gonna go back up top, architecture, component, model in place. At this point, we're going to come down here again, walls. We hit OK, and then I give it a name wall sweeps again. OK, let's put wall sweeps too. There we go. Now, at this time, I'm going to say give us a sweep. Revit says, OK, pick a path or sketch a path. I'm going to choose sketch a path again, but this time I'm going to turn off chain. And I want you to now notice what happens when I trace the front of that building right here and I pick it. Notice how it pauses. And it actually gives us the ability to lock the relationship. It'll even say, hey, do you, if this wall gets longer or shorter, would you like to extend it or contract it? You say, yeah, sure. Um, now, I, if I want to add other lines, just continue with your line command. You do not have to go in any particular order. I can now even lock that relationship. So now it's going around the, the side of the building, which we had issues with in the first wall sweep tool. Now, I'll continue. But the real trick here is to turn chain off. Because as you draw and you stop, Revit will pause for you. So I'm going to come to this corner and it says, hey, would you like to lock the relationship? Sure. And then I continue over and outward. So you can continue with this. And as it's putting it in, it will actually ask you uh, to lock those elements. So I'll come down here and we should get a lock. Now, if we don't get a lock, it may be because it's off. So let's go ahead and take these out. Uh, another tool you can use is a pick. Now, if you use pick, you'll see you can use the pick and it'll let you lock it. And you can pick and you can lock it and you can pick and you can lock it. Now, where it gets a little weird sometimes is when you hit an intersection like this, pow. See how it shot it all the way in to the wall here? 
but it's following that, that, that edge. You can also use tools like trim to corner and hit the tube like so. So what we've done now is we actually created a sweep based on the face of the building. And we took that extra moment to lock the relationship. By doing that, let's see what happens. We hit finish now. Okay, more than one loop not allowed. This typically means that there is either a line on top of a line or there is some break. So let me hit continue here. And I'm going to take a look in here and see how that edge is not touching. Many times Revit will show you two orange dots. It didn't this time, but there is our issue. I'm going to go ahead and clean that up. There we go. At this time, I hit finish. And it says, OK, we've got that. So the path is, is now happy with the path. I'll go back to 3D. So the path path is happy. Now let's go ahead and choose a profile. Uh, select profile if that box is blank. And then you can drop this down and choose uh, whatever shape you want. Now I'm going to go ahead and choose this shape. And again, earlier we rotated the shape. It depends on how the shape was built. If you built the shape, you may have it look a bit different. And you may have built it correct so it snaps right on that surface. Now, so it's snapping. Now I'm going to also tell it to go a certain height. So let's go back here and we'll say this element, I want it to go up three feet. Three feet. Now let's see what happens. We hit finish and notice how it wraps the banding. And I'll hit finish. Now we took an extra moment to do that. What does that mean for us? Well, later on, we're working, someone's here and they grab these walls. Okay, and they move them. They go move and they pick a point here and they move it over to there. Um, they may take this and extend it or change it. Remember, these are uh, custom items we did in a previous video. Uh, let's just take this wall and move it. Okay, I'll even maybe change this. Let's go ahead and drop it down. I think I got a different size one in there. Um, notice what has happened. See how it's following those edges. Let's go back to 3D and see what happens. So even though we have made some major changes to the building, you'll notice that that banding has actually updated. Now you will notice the edge here did not uh, update. Chances are we did not lock that last edge right there. So that's what caused the problem. Now you can always edit these after the fact. Just hit edit in place. And then you're going to go ahead and hit edit the sweep. And we're going to go back to this line. Now you edit the line. <clears throat> and you'll see it says sketch path. This line can then be adjusted. Let's go back to our plan view. I'll grab this element, maybe just delete it. OK, hit finish and hit finish and work our way out. So that is an in-place sweep. Uh, you also have the ability to change the material like we did in uh, maybe you wanted to change it in an earlier one. But you have to change it while you're in the sweep. Notice I'm still in the sweep family. Uh, change the material here. Once the material is changed, I'll just go ahead and fire something up. Let's just go ahead and pick brick common. We hit OK on that. You'll notice there's the brick. It doesn't line up on all of that, but that's beside the point. At this time, we hit finish. And now you'll see we have that banding going around the building. So hopefully that uh, shows you a quick tip on how to use that sweeps with different wall types in Revit.